Moore Park, population then about 3,000. Not much by today's standards, but then enough to merit a one-hour special program by America's first genuine star of television news. The Susanna reactor started producing power early in November, and our cameras were focused on the town at 7.30 p.m. November 12, 1957, when for the first time in the United States, an entire community was illuminated by electricity generated by an atomic reactor. Enrico Fermi once looked at a reactor and said, wouldn't it be wonderful if it could cure the common cold? Here at Moore Park, a chain reaction that started with him washed the dishes and lit a book for a small boy to read. But less than two years after that dramatic send-off, something went wrong. Some of the fuel rods partially melted. Unit 4 has obtained these retouched photographs and drawings of the damaged reactor core, pictures of the first fuel-melting accident in a commercially producing nuclear power plant. Is there any comparison to Three Mile Island? The most uh, obvious uh, similarity was in the fuel condition and uh, between SRE and the, and the reported fuel condition at the Three Mile Island facility. For the next several days, we'll be showing you pictures of how the fuel melting incident happened and what was done about it. You'll hear from Atomics International and from independent consultants on how it was handled. We'll show you how the reactor is still being decommissioned now, 20 years after the accident. Despite the seriousness of the accident, even Edward R. Murrow might have missed its importance at the time. The official news release claimed there was no indication of unsafe reactor conditions, and newspapers treated the matter routinely. Local public safety officials weren't told much either. Today's the first time that I've heard of the 59 incident when you mentioned it a while ago. Two later incidents are much better known. By January of 1961, this reactor on the Idaho desert had been malfunctioning for two months, but it was operated anyway, until an explosion destroyed it. An explosion with so much force, it lifted the 60-ton reactor several feet in the air. A fuel rod plug shot up and impaled a maintenance man on the ceiling of the reactor building. The only two other people at work were killed, too. It took 1,200 people a year and a half to take the plant apart, and a large part of the Idaho desert will be uninhabitable for generations to come. But for the threatened loss of human life, the closest call before Three Mile Island was at the Fermi plant near Detroit, a breeder reactor, the most dangerous kind of all. It, too, had not been working well, but was operated anyway, till in 1966 it came within seconds of melting down. It's now in radioactive mothballs. The Reader's Digest Press has called it a ghost that cannot be laid to rest. The sodium reactor experiment, or SRE, at Santa Susana was smaller than these, but the accident was severe. The man who compared it to Three Mile Island looked at several reports on the SRE melting. Once a high-level nuclear engineer with General Electric, he's now an independent consultant. So how well was the SRE accident handled? Well, I was really uh, appalled at the uh, sort of the cavalier attitude that they demonstrated following this very severe uh, event in uh, July of 1959 when uh, when they had a lot of fuel damage and, and the thing that that shook me the most was the fact that they had this severe power excursion which means that the power was increasing rapidly and uh, they got the thing shut down only by manually scramming the reactor after the scram system failed to do so and yet in less than two hours after they had terminated this event they had started the plant back up as if nothing happened. Well, you have to go back at that stage of the game, which was this was a power, part of the power demonstration program. It was really a research tool. It was the first of its kind in the world. And so, as you have a first of a kind of anything, there were things that we were learning as well as operating. And part of that is the operating experience. Uh, as you, in retrospect of any type of thing, you can go back and find some data that says, hey, if you'd really looked at this, you might, might see things differently now that you've seen the end results. So the accident at Santa Susana was serious. About 10,000 curies of radiation were released in all. And yet there's room for debate on how well it was handled. Still, it has never been detailed in public till now. Tomorrow, we'll show you how the accident happened and how it can be evaluated in different ways, depending on your point of view. John?
there was a nuclear accident in the mountains west of Chatsworth. It happened 20 years ago. There was no large-scale public exposure to radiation. But the public has never been given details till now. And tonight, for the first time, Warren's going to tell us the story and show us the film on this. Warren? Thank you, John. Unit 4 has been able to dig up government films and documents that show what happened, and we've asked a nuclear engineer to evaluate them for us. He is Dale Breidenbaugh, formerly a high-level technical expert with General Electric. He's now an industry critic, although he says he is not anti-nuclear, and he works as an independent consultant both here and in other countries as well. You'll hear his comments. The reactor was located 35 miles from downtown Los Angeles. It was called the Sodium Reactor Experiment, or SRE, built for the government by Atomics International. It began operating in 1957. The accident happened in 1959. The SRE's most troublesome run began July 12, 1959. By the next day, the power was rising for no apparent reason. The control rods failed to stop it. The reactor failed to shut itself down, so it was stopped or scrammed by hand. Reports show the operators did not know what was wrong, but that somehow they decided the power excursion had not affected the reactor adversely. So they started it up again. That would be unheard of in today's safety atmosphere. What does it mean? What were the potentialities there? Well, there were a lot of things that they didn't know about uh, what had caused the power excursion. They were measuring high radiation uh, release uh, levels within the uh, reactor building, and they didn't know why uh, that release was occurring. And essentially, they didn't know what the reactor core uh, condition was, but for some reason, uh, they felt they needed to get back in operation. The reactor continued to run for another two weeks, even though there was more trouble. It was shut down repeatedly for various reasons, including buildups of radioactivity in the building above the reactor. That's what led to the final shutdown 13 days after the first signs of trouble. John Walter was there at the time. He's still there. It was actually very undramatic. Um, uh, the evidence that there'd been some core damage uh, were some moderately high radiation levels that, uh, as I recall, we had to evacuate this immediate area and for a short time uh, and uh, that then to really find out what happened, we had to remove the parts and put them in a hot cell to, to see what had happened to them. So it was uh, kind of actually anticlimactic. Anticlimactic or not, it was weeks before special equipment could be designed and constructed to find out what went wrong. The damage turned out to be very extensive. 13 of 43 fuel rods partially melted. 81 pieces of uranium fuel scattered around on the bottom of the core. Then things got worse. When operators tried to unload the fuel, some rods broke apart, as shown by these animated drawings on a government training film, which has never been shown in public till now. Some rods were found to have swelled in the excessive heat and stuck in place. Ultimately, the entire reactor had to be vibrated in order to shake them loose. Twenty years later, opinions still differ on how the matter was handled. A uh, slipshod operation, I guess, is the way I would describe it, uh, and, uh, uh, and just uh, uh, sort of a damn the torpedoes full speed ahead attitude, which is, uh, which is fine if you're fighting a war, I guess, but it is certainly not a way to run a reactor for a peaceful purpose.